Chapter 7 By the time the Oregonian reporter called, I had already exiled myself to the upper floor of my home, a few miles outside the town of Bozeman, Montana. My hibernation had not officially begun. I was still awaiting publication of the editor's note, but there seemed no place else to go. I had squandered my career due to stupidity and hubris. I had caused my own downfall. I didn't want to see my friends or speak with my parents. I felt remorseful and ashamed and confused. I don't know what I wanted, except to blame someone else for my deceit. Hours at a stretch, I lay prone on the upstairs sofa, burrowed beneath my laundry pile, or else I paced back and forth in my bedroom. When my head began to pound, when I was so furious at myself that my vision went fuzzy, I'd clamp my palms over my ears and yell at the ceiling until my breath gave out. All day, I wore sweatpants and bedroom slippers. I didn't watch television or listen to music. I ate whatever canned foods were left in the house. More than once, I crawled into the cramped, dusty space underneath my writing desk and tore at the carpet, rubbing my fingers raw. It was at this point that the reporter phoned. The story he told me was so absurd and unexpected, and delivered with such impeccable timing, that it slapped me from my brooding. All at once I was curious and repulsed and perplexed. And then my immediate feelings coalesced into one distinct, uncontainable reaction. I laughed. I really did, out loud, over the phone, to the reporter from the Oregonian. The editor's note was printed the next morning. I remained in hiding for a spell, but I felt as though I could breathe again. I'd been released from my loop of self-centered moping. I ventured to the supermarket for supplies. I rented a few movies. I peeked on the internet to learn about Longo and read of my disgrace. As the other media outlets weighed in, one journalist compared my ethics to those of a glazy-eyed person who kills abortion doctors. I remained passive and distant saddened in a stunned sort of way, as if watching my belongings consumed by a fire. I took my beatings, and then, once the story had played itself out, I picked up the phone and called the Oregonian reporter. I had only one question. How could I get in touch with Christian Longo? That was impossible, the reporter said. Longo's lawyers, he was represented by two public defenders, had forbidden their client from speaking with the press. Nearly every West Coast news outlet from Seattle to San Francisco had requested an interview, and not one, the reporter told me, had been accommodated. Even so, on March 6, 2002, two weeks after the editor's note had appeared, I wrote Longo a letter. I filled the front and back of one sheet of yellow-lined paper. Here, in its entirety, is what I wrote. Dear Mr. Longo, Yes, it is actually me, Michael Finkel of the New York Times, or rather, formerly, of the New York Times. To tell you the truth, I was just recently fired. I invented a character in one of my recent stories, and I was caught, and was very publicly fired. So now I am out of a job. This is why I am writing this by hand rather than computer. I'm actually no longer an official journalist, though I still love to write. I understand that while you were in Mexico, you used my name. I don't mind this at all. In fact, I find it both interesting and, in a way, it makes me feel somewhat honored. I understand that you are facing an upcoming trial, and that there is probably much that you are unable to talk about, but I was hoping that you would agree to meet with me in person. I live here in Montana, which is not much of a long drive away. I'd like to ask you why you chose to be me, and what it felt like, and maybe talk with you a bit about this. We can even talk about writing if you want. I'd like to do this because at the same time that you were using my name, I lost my own. My firing, as I mentioned, was very public. During my firing, I was robbed of the two things that a freelance writer needs to survive, his name and his reputation. Both are now gone. Now that I'm out of a job, I am sort of seeking to find out who I really am, and I would be grateful and honored 
if you would consider speaking with me. Please write me back. My address is on the front of this note. Or call me collect. Please let me know when you are willing to meet, and I will be there. I look forward to hearing from you. Yours, Mike Finkel. I photocopied the letter, then mailed the original to Christian Longo, care of the Lincoln County Jail. Chapter 8 